Welcome to the latest in Vendetta's MBA preview series for season 21-22. My name's Jared Prosser. Today, we're going to talk about the Golden State Warriors. I'm here with Carl Heiser. He's going to run you through everything about Golden State for the season 21-22. Carl, how are you doing? Doing well. Yeah, looking forward to talking about the Warriors. More than the Pacers. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and interesting team, the Warriors. You know, are they... Um, are they are they rebuilding? Are they a, a true contender? There's, I'm not quite sure whether they're Arthur or Martha, to, to use an old phrase. It is very difficult to tell, um, just especially with the, the injuries that they've been dealing with. And um, it's, there's a lot to suggest that they will be much better this year, but also it's, it's been a while since certain players have seen the floor. So yes, we will, we will very famously them. one of them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So let's before we get into what they're going to do this season, let's uh, let's recap what they did last time out. Last year was an interesting year for the Warriors because I don't think many people, I think most people expected them to be uh, quite terrible. <laughs> um, just with their roster, I, it didn't it didn't look it looked as though the dynasty was pretty much over, and I think it's probably safe to say at this point that it is. Um, but the Warriors did manage to put together a thirty nine win season. Um, Steph Curry absolutely put the team on his back. He averaged 32 points a game, five rebounds and five assists, uh, to go with a steal as well. So a career year for Steph Curry. And he did it with all the defensive pressure. There there was literally no safety valves for him. It was an amazing season. Mm, It was, it was a fantastic season for Steph Curry. Um, Mm. and one that led to the Warriors (laughs) making the playing game as the nine seed. Um, they... Unfortunately, did not uh, make the playoffs, but um, looking forward, you know, they got their draft picks. So, so looking forward, I think, you know, Golden State fans can be excited that they can maybe potentially find themselves back kind of in the mix this year. Well, that those draft picks, it's a, it's a really good segue into having a look at what they did over the offseason. They, um, an offseason where most people, and, and I'll admit, me included, expected the Warriors to to package picks and players and try and bring in another star man, but they they stuck fat. They went with the with the young fellas. Yeah, the Warriors ended up with they had two lottery picks, and so mm-hmm. I do think that um, I don't think it was wrong of people to assume that they were they were going to trade the picks. I also thought they were tra- going to trade the picks, package them with Andrew Wiggins or something, but they yeah. stuck, they stuck with the picks they had and um, came away, I believe, one of the big winners of the draft, uh, taking Jonathan Kuminga from the G League at the seventh overall pick. And then... We're, we're not going to mention his nickname here. No, we're not. I just want to say that it That's is how the worst we get nickname in pro sport. The single worst nickname in pro sport. It's Google bad. it if you re- if you need to, people. But we're not going to mention the actual word here. <laughs> not good, but <laughs> um, the player himself, quite a lot of promise. Um, he doesn't quite yet have the jump shot figured out, but as far as just pure athleticism and feel for the game, he's got it in spades. Um, this mm-hmm. Kuminga is could potentially be a top five player in this class. So to get him at seven is is fantastic for them. Yeah, otherworldly athlete. He's, he's still figuring out the whole how do I play basketball bit. Right. But, um, but when you've got that sort of athleticism, if the penny eventually drops, you know, Zach Levine was a similar sort of, sort of athlete who really wasn't that good at actual basketball decisions. But you look at what he's doing now, you know, that, that he's got that sort of potential to make it. Mm-hmm. And then with their other lottery pick, they selected Moses Moody, who's a 6'6 guard out of uh, the University of Arkansas. Really great three-point shooter, really great defender. Mm-hmm. I loved the pick at the time. I think that was a fantastic selection for them. especially a steal at 14. I think definitely Absolute a steal. Absolute steal, yeah. There were some mock drafts that projected him to go in the top six or seven picks, so. Th- there were a lot who had the Warriors picking him at seven. <laughs> yeah, so overall <laughs> – Overall, really fantastic pick and fits well with just their what they want to do offensively um, with shooting the ball and then provide some defense to boot, which is certainly helpful. We'll take some of the, the stress off of 
Steph Curry um, to make things happen on the on the perimeter mm-hmm. defensively. So really great selection. I do hope you see some playing time this year. And, and some interesting veterans that they've picked up as well. It was an interesting offseason for the Warriors. They're, they're kind of getting the band back together to try to recreate some of that uh, championship magic that they had. So they, they brought back Andre Iguodala and they brought back Jordan Bell. Um, remains to be seen how much those players will actually contribute at this stage in their mm-hmm. career. Andre Iguodala has sort of fallen off the last, years old. last few years. Yeah, he's just trying to get that those last few paychecks. And then yeah. Jordan Bell um, – was a solid role player for the Warriors back when they were winning championships. Then he went off to the Timberwolves and went to the Wizards after that and was not, was not at all a contributor on those teams. So maybe it's just the environment for him and he, you know, kind of rediscovered some of what made him a valuable role player in his original stint in Golden State. Um, what do you think of the, uh, the Otto Porter import? I... I don't know, to be honest. I don't, I, I think it's an interesting fit. Um, I think there was some member of Warriors media who said, you know, now the Warriors have their greatest shooting trio of all time, um, which is just ludicrous considering they had Kevin Durant just a few years ago. But, um, <laughs> and, and this is no disrespect to Otto. He can shoot the No, he can, he can absolutely he's shoot. He's not Kevin Durant. <laughs> Kevin Durant. I think that's. <laughs> I don't think he'll be offended to not be Kevin Durant. But, uh, yeah, I think it'll be interesting. Um, I'm curious to see what kind of starting lineup they roll out, especially with Wiggins still on the roster. Um, but, yeah, it's um, it's a move for sure. They also brought in Bielitsa, who's a, who's a solid stretch four. Uh, I do like that um, from, a, from a game plan standpoint. Um, he should be well rested too. He did not see the court in Miami. They, they just did not mm-hmm. trust him for whatever reason. I'm assuming defense. But. Yeah, right. Um, mm-hmm. And then as far as losses go, they they didn't bring back Kent Bays more, which I don't think anybody really expected them to do that. Um, they lost Kelly Oubre Jr. Um, he went to Charlotte. Uh, he was he was all right um, in his time there, but overall not a fantastic shooter. And hmm. just, just didn't oh, fit. Yeah, it, it just wasn't a good fit. And so, yeah. um, and they also, uh, Nico Mannion is no longer in the NBA. So, <laughs> uh, the Italian Italian superstar Nico Mannion. Yep. Uh, so, this this might be the most obvious question of our entire NBA preview series for any team. But who, Carl Heiser, is Golden State's key man? It's Steph Curry. I'm not surprised. No. I hope I'm not surprising anybody there. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. it's Steph Curry. I mean, he averaged, like I said, 32 points per game last year. Absolutely carried this team. I do think he has probably a bit better of a supporting cast this year. So ideally, he won't have to do that for another season. He was remarkably healthy last year. Um, I don't know that you can say that about most other, you know, years that he's had, but remarkably healthy and so unexpectedly healthy too un- yeah unexpectedly so and i he has to be the key player for them you know yeah. moving forward he is the like he is the golden state warriors essentially yeah there's, there's not a lot of explanation needed for that one is there yeah. <laughs> but this one is a little bit more of an intriguing question who is the x factor for the warriors this season clay thompson i think it has to be clay thompson he is still recovering from injuries so I don't know that he'll play to start the year but he has not played in two seasons we have not nice. seen a lick of Clay Thompson in two seasons and the injuries that he's dealing with are not easy to come back from at all they you are just not the same player um with, particularly the Achilles the with, second particularly injury. the Achilles yeah there's the saying Achilles heel is a thing for a reason <laughs> um yeah he, yeah, so he's he's one of the greatest shooters of all time, been the go-to number two option for this team when they were winning championships, but I don't know. It's, That's it's difficult asterisk to non-Durant years. Right, yeah, in yeah. the non-Durant years. That's, <laughs> that is true. That's fair. Yeah. But, um, I mean, he's the second Splash brother. He, yeah. um, 
has shot 40%, I think, every season of his career from three. And but it's it's really difficult to say at this point what he is. Is he still mm-hmm. going to be this, you know, tenacious perimeter defender who can give you 18 points a night um, and explode for 35 some nights? I would hesitate to say yes with his injury history, but it's you never know. <laughs> so you've you've raised what I think is the key point there. Shooting never goes away. Like mm-hmm. Clay Thompson is going to be hitting 45% of his threes until he's 70 years old. But his, you know, he, the other half of his value, the underrated part of his value, is that he takes the defensive assignment away from Steph Curry. But 30, what is he now, 32 years old, I believe. And as you mentioned, coming off an Achilles and an ACL, you know, we can't expect, it, it's not fair to expect Clay Thompson to be that lockdown defender. Um, he'll still be able to hit catch and shoot jump, sh- jump shots. Whether he can fly off screens in the way he used to, I'm interested to see. But defensively, I, I really think Golden State is going to suffer because Clay is still six or seven and he'll still have instincts, but surely he's not going to be moving the way he was. Right. That's the, and that's the trend that we see most of the time with players in their 30s is that they're already kind of taking that slight decline as far as their speed and agility go. And yeah. these, these injuries certainly aren't helping um, Clay's cause in that regard. So, yeah, the questions entering the season are whether or not he will have the, the lateral mobility um, to guard players on the perimeter, whether he'll have the speed to run and spot up in transition, whether – um, cause there are a lot of aspects of his game that, um, sort of rely on, on that athleticism. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. definitely an X, X factor entering the season. The, the one positive for Golden State fans in, in Clay's return is their, the, you know, their hero slash villain, Kevin Durant. You know, he's uh, 32 years old last season and coming off an Achilles and, you know, he was, just a toe, literally a toe away from beating the Bucks and probably winning a title as a result. So there is a very recent, a re- very recent and very prominent precedent for somebody coming back. But at the same time, KD wasn't coming off and Achilles coming off an ACL. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm just, and also Durant's a bit of a freak. So I, <laughs> right. as, I, we're, um, as we've said already, it is a little unfair to expect players to be Kevin Durant. Um, yes, <laughs> but yeah, that's. I do think it's important for people to recognize that uh, Durant, in pretty much any case for anything, is usually the exception and not the rule. <laughs> yeah. So, um, while it, it's that's nice, a great to, way to put it, right? While it's nice to sort of look to that example and say, well, Clay can come back. Um, mm-hmm. For one, he is he does have kind of the double injury there that he's dealing with, and. It, you know, I, I do think Durant is an exception as far as that goes. I don't think most people expected him to return to form as quickly as he did. No, no, surely not. Surely not. Uh, so let's tie this in a neat little bow. Carl Heiser, what do you think will happen with the Warriors this season? Where, what, how many wins will they get? Where will they end up? What's their outlook? So this was a 39-win team last year, and I do expect them to get a, a little – you know, a little bit of a boost from getting Clay Thompson back. And I think if I do think their rookies will at least one of them, not sure which, but I think at least one of them will be able to contribute right away. Um, just a, just for, an aside there. Do we still consider James Wiseman effectively a rookie? That's OK. Well, that's a good question. Something we didn't touch on is mm. is James. That's another X factor, I think, for this team mm. is, is James Wiseman even going to be effective for them? I think. Yeah. I, I don't like the trend of kind of NBA fan, you know, a player isn't good right away their rookie year and there are people are already giving up on them. I'm, I'm Welcome not to social media, <laughs> right. I'm not of the mind that, you know, James Wiseman is washed up or anything at the ripe age of 20 or however old he is. But and you, can, you consider the journey he's had. He had, he played what, three games of his played, freshman yeah, season. Four or five games for Memphis. Yeah. Did not came into, really, yeah, came into his rookie season without a training camp or with a, a very truncated training camp, comes into the most complicated offensive system in NBA basketball mm-hmm. and then misses the second half of the season injured. Like, 
whatever could go wrong for Wiseman has gone wrong. So it, it will be interesting to see how he comes in this season with a full a full preseason and you know touch with a healthy preseason behind him. Yeah, so I do going going along with my my season prediction for them. I think Wiseman should be better this year. I, I do think we can expect him to be better this year. Um, given a full full season and a full off season of preparation, I think we'll kind of see what people were were hyping him up for. Uh, maybe not maybe not totally, but I do think we will see flashes of that. And so. Um, as far as how that elevates the Warriors, they were a 39-win team last year. I think they can – I think they can get up to 43, 44 wins. Um, some of the teams in the Western Conference are just absolutely stacked. And um, yeah. given how the Warriors performed last year, I'm not – you know, it would be very unrealistic for me to say, oh, they're going to win 55 games and be right back in the championship yeah. conversation. Um, that That is not the case at all, but – I, I think this is a playoff, you know, play-in sort of team. Um, and 44 wins is nothing to sneeze at. That would have been the fifth seed in the West last season. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. I, I think they have the pieces to, to make it work, and I trust Steve Kerr, and I trust Steph Curry. And, um, yeah, so I, I think Warriors fans don't have to necessarily despair, but uh, they'll, be, they'll be good enough. Yeah, I, I agree. I think bottom half of the playoff picture is about right for, for this version of the Warriors. Uh, so that will do it for our Golden State Warriors preview for Vendetta Sports Media. This will come out on YouTube, uh, well, hopefully in the next day or so from when we're recording it on the, uh, the 15th of October. Just a few more days to go until we get actual NBA basketball again. So jump on YouTube, jump on the socials, share it, hit like, hit the subscribe button. I'm Jared Prosser. That's Carl Heiser. We will see you next time.